McCall, a very skilled competitor, an orthodox just you said. Somebody get me that t-shirt, I need a souvenir. No! Nope. Somebody get me that t-shirt. I need something to wear in the little box. And the bulldozer exchanging some not so pleasant words with the fans. And there you see the man that's bigger than a bread box, but not smarter than a cinder block. What? Carl. Now this is a non-title match. The referee putting the title in the corner. Then you hear the bell. And in a few moments, we may have to pull, we may have to pull that bell nine times in memory of Paul after the bulldozer is through with him. Not even close. Not even close, Steve. And the bulldozer and Paul circling each other like two caged animals. Now Cole claiming that Bulldozer is the movie star who was seen in Transformers. I have no idea what you're talking about. Not yeah, Transformers, uh, it's a movie where the robots change into different things and like they have Optimus No, I have no idea what the relevance to the match and the contest is. How about you try staying on focus on the point? The bulldozer shoving Carl down to the mat. Carl looking up, smiling, shrugs his shoulders, trying to make light of the situation. But he knows he's in trouble here. He knows how big, how powerful, how destructive the bulldozer can be. And he's looking for a way, any way, to get the big man off his feet. Well, Carl is no stranger to wrestling big man. He's wrestled the bandit. He's wrestled love. He's wrestled big Willie Black. He but has... he's never wrestled a man like the bulldozer. He's big. He's strong. He's fast. He's agile. He's young. And he's experienced. And he's smelly. Have you smelled the scent since, get, since I had to sit back down? That's the stink of success, Jonathan Styles. I, I know you're not it, used to it. I wouldn't call it that. And Bulldozer now in control of the match and Carl reversing. And Rotating the arm there of the Bulldozer. And I tell you what, if Bulldozer's not careful, Carl may end up getting behind him and put him in that finish of the and Carl using Chris's headbutt to take him partly. And he's biting away on the fingers on the hand of the Bulldozer. Get Carl some hot sauce. Carl the mangy dog that he is. I'm sure that trying to bite off the hand of the bulldozer seems like a reasonable way to find a meal. One too many nights with a free can of Spam that expired from the Goodwill probably isn't very good for the digestive tract. And I know he's desperate for a meal, but if he tries to bite those fingers too much, the bulldozer is likely to rip his teeth right out of his head. Ah, oh, that's, that's absolutely a falsehood. I tell you, Carl and I have had wonderful meals together. Granted, they're on Play-Doh plates and salt silverware, but they are still great meals. And Carl somehow regained the advantage with an arm lock, but the bulldozer firing away a stiff shot to that thick head of Carl, a headbutt. That might not be the right plan. Carl's head is too thick. He's too stupid for that hole to have any effect. And you see Carl there with a trademark headbutt of his own. Carl having one of probably the, the toughest head in my state wrestling. And now in control of this match as he puts the bulldozer in the corner, but bulldozer reverses. And bulldozer coming in and splashes against Carl. And bulldozer with a seven takeover, a kick to the back of Carl, rounding on the ropes, big boots straight to the chin of Carl, nearly knocked him unconscious. It's a glass butt, and almost a three count there. And Carl is in trouble here. Carl really needs to get some offense going because the Bulldozer is definitely going to capitalize and keep Carl down on that mat. And the Bulldozer using his sides here to help maintain the leverage. Carl struggling to get back to a kneeling position. Back up to his feet though. The Bulldozer still in control with that modified wrist lock of his, but Carl trying to force him over. Don't think that's going to work out well. And the Bulldozer steps behind, 
uses the leg behind Carl. Young trip him up with a takedown, but Carl reverses into a hammerlock. And he's right over top of the big man now. He better hold on for dear life. And I tell you what, Carl, in a great position there, an advantageous position to take apart the bulldozer. And needs to keep him down. But you see, the bulldozer is so much power behind him. Couldn't hold on to him for very long. And it's very hard, very difficult to keep a man that big and that strong down. Normally, you create a leverage advantage on the back of a man. But Carl, the much lighter of the two men, the much bigger of the two men, able to muscle right out, bounce off the ropes, giant shoulder block, and right back to that dominating position that the bulldozer is so used to in these kinds of contests. And I tell you what, bulldozer now has Carl down, trying to cut off that oxygen to wreck the water artery. And so Carl down, and so far he's been successful, ladies and gentlemen. But Carl finding it. Do the fans give him that glimmer of hope? He got up off the mat, he got to his feet, there's some elbows to the midsection to get out of it. Oh, firing away to the midsection, Sal Brooks. Right That's there. a close line attempt for the bulldozer. Oh, no. Good go, Mighty nearly decapitated him right there. And that's like running full force into a steel girder. And Carl definitely down now after the big close line by the bulldozer. Bulldozer measures him. Stiff shot to the head of Carl, sends him off the ropes. Carl comes off the ropes, picks him up. That big sidewalk slam, this could be it, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, no, Carl gets out of it, yes, ladies and gentlemen. The bulldozer questioning the veracity of the referee's three count. Right back on target there, and Carl kicking away at that hamstring of the bulldozer. Taking the wheel out, they has marked the place, marked the time. The bulldozer has been taken down of his legs by Carl. And the cliche you hear so often in this business, he's chopping down the redwood right now. You have a big old tall tree, you need to get something from it. You gotta chop it down, get it on your level. And that's what Carl's trying to do with the bulldozer right now. Absolutely, Carl taking apart that leg and shades of Ric Flair, baby, figure four, here we go! Woo! And he has it locked in against the odds. Carl with the big submission maneuver here, cinching in that figure for a leg lock, and you see him raising up his body on the backs of his poles, pushing his body up to apply more pressure. But the bulldozer are so big and strong, already a reversal, and Carl clings to that bottom rope for dear life. Now Carl using great ring psychology there, and status to know exactly where to grab because he has a good brain to understand that. I would question, question the intelligence of that statement. Carl has sustained so many injuries to the back of his head that I imagine he may have acute brain setting syndrome. I've noticed he holds his head a lot. He suffers from migraines. There's a possibility they might have intracranial hemorrhages that haven't been documented. This man is so nutty, so screw loose. I question that he should even be allowed to compete in this business. Well, he's been cleared by NWA as well as Mountain State Wrestling Physicians to be in that ring. Well, this may be a man that knows how to apply a single leg Boston Crab, but he's also the man that a week ago knew how to single-handedly have 48 personalities in a given hour. Carl Baga, Carl Carleone, Big Daddy Carl, Carl with chains, Carl with a Q-tip, Carl thinks he's a duck, Carl thinks he's a big foot. I don't care. The man is not all there, and that's why the bulldozer is able to so easily take advantage of a man who is so talented like Carl. Now, speaking, speaking of taking advantage, I... Oh, mighty, what a move! Carl's taking advantage of that leg, and if you notice, the bulldozer's pace has slowed down a little bit due to the figure four and single leg Boston Crown. And that has to be like having a 700-pound bull fall on top of your back. Oh, no, wait a minute. What is this? No, he is not. Yes, he is. He's ascending the middle turnbuckle, and the bulldozer telling the fans this one is all but over. If he lands this one on Carl, he may very well oh, get the no, 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 no. Last second, though, Carl moves out of the way. And can he find the strength to get back up to his feet first now? This is the time that you see the momentum change in the contest if it's going to happen. And Carl has to pull something. Got to look deep, deep within himself. Deep to all the awards he won this year. And remember, why he is the television champion. And pull up 
And everyone's on the tip of their toes right now, from the fans in this arena to the announcers in the booth, the Mama Does are back home, and to Carl's caretakers at the Nut House. We're all curious what's going to happen now. Carl's absorbed so much punishment, but he's up to his feet. Ready for three shots. No, and another headbutt by Carl. And the Bulldogs are completely dazed as he's put into the corner. And the referee, ref, get out of the way. What are you doing now? Oh, wait a low blow by the Dozer. And the nut from the nut house in Togus is on the receiving end. And there you see the Bulldozer. Plants him with the cement mixer. Covers him. One, two, three. And the Bulldozer has just pinned our television champion by a liberal and blatant interference. And who can stop this man? That was our television champion! And he couldn't build enough momentum to sustain his offense for more than a few moments during the contest. God Almighty, who can stop this man? Who can stop him when there is no cheating in this match? Cheating? What the hell are you talking about, Stop! Oh, did you not see the low blow? I saw the referee count one, two, three. I saw a legitimate victory. I see the bulldozer telling the world that he deserves that television title as well as the heavyweight title. And I would be hard pressed to acknowledge an argument from anyone to otherwise. Okay, argument one, the title is not on the line. Argument two, the Bulldogs used the level. So see, there's where the referee should Why be. Why shouldn't he have the title? He actually pinned a champion. The Maestro has a title and he never did that. Oh, don't start with this, Steve. Let me tell you something here. If the referee was intelligent, as soon as the goes, he put his hands on him, he should have reversed the decision. And I'll tell you what, put these men in there again next week, next month, next year. And the Bulldozer will win again. No, this won't. is a big win and a lot of big momentum for the big, bad, powerful, and destructive force of nature known as the Bulldozer, the baddest man in the Mountain State today. Mark my words, fans, coming up against the snow, we may see that title change hands. Keep your eyes no. on this big man. We'll be right back. Fans, don't go anywhere. Main event is next. That big four corners match. You don't want to miss it.